All right, folks, we've made it. We've done it. We've had our struggles. We've had our ups and downs. We finally made it to Halloween. It's officially October 31st, so 31 Days of Horrorween 2017 is El Completo. So, you know, uh, third year in a row we've done this. It's always a little bit bittersweet to say goodbye. I mean, it's a real pain in the ass doing all these videos and trying to get them uploaded and arranging them and filming them and trying to find things to say about movies that really don't have a whole lot to say about. But when you look back on it, and you realize that throughout the entire month of October, you had the steadfastness and the dedication to upload a video every single day, taking a look at the best, and oftentimes worst, the horror genre had to offer for over 100 years, you feel accomplished. Not a whole lot of accomplished, but accomplished nonetheless. So here we are, last day of 31 Days of Halloween 2017. And wrap up the whole kit and caboodle, we're taking a look at a film from 2016 called Raw. Except it was actually made in France a year before, I think, where it was called Grave. But it really didn't start making the rounds in the U.S. and the rest of the West until early this year. So even though it is technically a 2016 film, most people didn't get around to see it until 2017. So it's kind of a current year movie, but not really. But doesn't matter. We don't have to get into the little details there. Uh, the film itself, it's pretty acclaimed. It got a lot of really good ratings on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. And uh, I just watched this movie a couple hours ago, so it's still pretty fresh in my mind. Um, the thing about this movie, and as I was watching it, I realized, and I've known this for quite some time, but it's kind of reinforced the central idea, that the entire horror genre, and I think filmmaking as a whole, is like subconsciously erected by the subliminal and sometimes superliminal sexual fetishes of the directors. I mean, that entire, you know, oeuvre there has completely framed the entire Hollywood industry and the entire industry of cinema. Think about it. Uh, go back to Quentin Tarantino. I'm, I am convinced even now that the only reason Quentin Tarantino is a director and he's in Hollywood is because he wanted to, like, expand his foot fetish to, like, A-list celebrities. That's the reason why he makes movies. We all know it. Another guy like that, uh, Guillermo del Toro, all of his movies, he's about covering actresses in gunk and goo and all sorts of the gross stuff. Not sure why, but it happens in every movie. That's what gets him off, apparently. And I'm sure there's, like, cracked articles out there. Somebody's already written this about how, like, these weird fetishes have kind of inspired, you know, these entire directorial ouvoirs. And watching Raw, and it's interesting because it's directed by a woman named Julia Ducarno. Well, yeah, I'm sure they pronounce it differently, but whatever. So it's interesting from perspective, but at the same time, watch this movie, I'm like, I don't know if this thing is supposed to be kind of like a, a feminist, subversive movie, kind of going against the male gaze, or if this uh, Julia DeCarno broad is, like, really into some freaky stuff, because there's a lot of stuff in this movie that is just straight up, well, I mean, it's like fetish fodder. I mean, there's no way to say it. Apparently, uh, she has the same thing that uh, Guillermo del Toro has, because there's like four or five scenes in this movie of actresses just getting, like, stuff dumped all over them. I think the official term for it, and I've checked the Urban Dictionary again, is it's called a gunge fetish. So if you're into that, you're going to love this movie. But it seems like every other scene, there's, like, some actress, some character in the movie, just getting, like, some weird, like, substance dumped on her. You know, if it's not fake blood, there's like this entire scene where... Uh, these two characters are doused in, you know, red, uh, not red and blue, blue and yellow paint, and they make out and they get green, and there's just stuff everywhere. I mean, the main actress of the movie is just covered in stuff from, like, start to finish. And uh, it's just one of those things where it happens so often that you kind of realize it's not just, you know, a coincidence. Like, the director or the producer or somebody behind this movie really, really has a thing for that and had to be wedged in the movie. It's not even really that pivotal of a plot point either. It just kind of happens. Sorry. I know I'm kind of going on a rant here and a bit of a side, but some of those things where, like, when you notice it, you can't unnotice it. It just stays in your head. All right, so with that in mind, if you watch the trailer for the movie, I think you've kind of been led to believe that it's sort of like a zombie movie. Uh, but it's not really. I mean, technically, it kind of is, but not quite. Uh, the story is you've got this one girl who is... Um, Oh, what is she? She's suddenly to be a veterinarian, and she's a vegetarian or a vegan. And she goes to this veterinary school in France, and 
Apparently, I didn't know this, but over in France, the veterinary schools, they're really, really big, like the size of entire college campuses. And they're also really into hazing. So anyway, yeah, like I said earlier, there's this huge veterinary school, and you have like 100 students there. Like the freshmen are getting corralled, and like every day, they're having like some sort of like weird hazing ritual uh, lavished upon them. Like they're getting fake blood thrown on them. They have to eat like rabbit guts. They, uh... All sorts of weird stuff going on in the movie. Um, and uh, well, eventually, you know, the, the veterinary, the main, main character, the vegan girl, eventually she uh, ends up uh, eating like some raw meat. She gets like this weird rash, and before long, everybody on game starts getting it. And whatever the rash is, it causes them to have like sun urges to eat human flesh and bleed out of their nose a lot. And it doesn't really become like a full on zombie apocalypse, but it gets pretty close. It's uh, it's more about uh, the main character and her camaraderie with her roommate, who uh, you know tries to give her uh, Brazilian wax and all sorts of other stuff. And basically, about them two kind of dealing with cannibalism and trying to hide it from the rest of the campus. And uh, there's a big twist ending at the very finale of the film, where we find out the condition may be pre-existing. So there's that. Um, so it's one of those movies where. I think it's kind of overrated. I, mean, I know a lot of people like it and think it's a great, great, great inventive movie. But I mean, it's kind of been done before. It's one of those movies where it tries to be something more than a horror film. Um, and it's also one of those movies where it thinks just being gross is enough to kind of cover the fact that the movie itself isn't scary. Because it's not really a scary movie at all. I mean, the thing that makes the movie gross isn't even like the blood and the cannibalism. It's the other really gross stuff. Like we're doing the close-up, you know, uh, Brazilian waxing. Ooh, it's just icky. Now, that's not bad enough. You have a scene after that where uh, this one girl sticks her hand up a cow's butthole and pulls out a bunch of dookie with her fist. I mean, not really pivotal to the plot. It doesn't really add anything to it. But it's just nasty. And after that, of course, there's a scene where the two girls, you know, take turns peeing on a roof because I'm telling you, somebody in this movie is into some freaky, freaky stuff. That's all I can think of. So all in all, this movie has some good moments. The cinematography is really good. The pacing is all right, but it's one of those movies where the high spots never really shine. Like, you have some good build-up, but it never really leaves anything worthwhile. Especially, like, the final 20 minutes, I think it's going to be like a big apocalypse, but it just fizzles out, and you just kind of ask yourself, wondering, well, what was the point of the movie? I mean, the acting's not that good, it doesn't have a really good finish, and the gore effects, I mean, they're decent, but nothing we haven't seen before and better in a lot of other movies. So... All that to say, Raw, it's an okay movie. It's about half of it's good, about half of it's bad, so it all comes out as a wash in the end. You know, if there's nothing else on TV, you know, it could be a whole lot worse, but just from my vantage point, fairly overrated movie, not really worth going out of your way to see. All right, so using our patented tofu dog rating system, I'm going to give this one a decent-ish two and a half tofu dogs out of four. And finally, the rating system makes sense because it's about veganism. So there's that. All right. What else can I say? We're done. Tomorrow's November 1st. Halloween season's officially over. And uh, I say this every year. By the time, you know, I'm at day 11 or 12, I just hate myself. I hate doing it. It's too much work. You gotta take time on your schedule to do this, and it becomes really repetitive, and you hate it. But you force yourself to keep going on, and you struggle through, and you push yourself, and you get dedicated until eventually you get to the very end. And here we are, the end again, third year we've done this, day 31, it means we've watched, what is it, 63 movies over the last three years? You know, looking back on it, it was all worth it. You can be proud because you accomplished something and you stuck to it, can't nobody take that away from you. Not only is that good uh, advice come Halloween time, that's just good advice in general. If you're going to do something, do it, work through it, stick to it. And at the very end, you got something to be proud of. And while I'm not necessarily proud of this, you know, I can take a little bit of pride in it. You know, that uh, I went through with it. That I had that dedication, because most of you aren't doing anything. Let's just admit it. You know, you don't have the stick to it in this. So that's it. Nothing else to say except, well, I guess the only thing that you could say in a time like this. Happy Halloween.